Hi guys, this is Miss Wesley here. Um, we're going to talk about Unit 3, Skill 2, Part B today, which focuses all around rotations. So, you want to copy your essential question down. How do we perform a rotation, both centered at the origin and not centered at the origin? So, we're going to look at two different types of um, rotations today. You follow the same process, but sometimes they're going to be centered at the origin, sometimes they're not. So, take a second to pause the video to get your essential question down. Um, but like I said, our focus today is going to be on rotations. At this point so far, we've looked at translations and reflections. So we're going to look at this example one here. It says in the diagram below, A, B, C has the coordinates A, B, and C, which are already plotted for us right here. Graph and label A prime, B prime, C prime, the image of A, B, C after the following rotations. So we're going to perform one of these rotations at a time. And the best strategy that I can give you here is we're going to turn our paper. So if we put a little side note here, we're going to say turn paper towards the right so, it would help if I can spell right, there we go, so the shape moves counterclockwise. We always rotate counterclockwise unless the problem tells us otherwise. So that's kind of a rule in geometry that you're always going to go counterclockwise unless it tells you differently. So we're going to stick with that. We're going to go counterclockwise. So we're going to start by rotating 90 degrees and it says it's centered at the origin. So what that means is my center of rotation is right here. And I'm going to turn my paper so the shape moves counterclockwise, which would be this way. So I'm just going to take my paper, turn it once. So my triangle has now rotated 90 degrees, or it's moved one quadrant. And my fixed point was the origin. So how we're going to plot these points is I'm now going to take a look and say, okay, where is point A? And based on this being my origin, A now falls at negative 1, positive 1 because I'm moving to the left and then I'm moving up. So I'm going to turn my paper back and I'm going to plot that new point. Negative 1, 1. Plot it, and I'm going to call this A prime. I'm going to turn my paper back 90 degrees. I'm now going to look for where is B. Well, in order from the origin to get to B, I'd have to walk left 1, so negative 1, and I'd have to go up 1, 2, 3, 4. So I'm going to turn my paper back. I'm going to move to the left one. I'm going to go up one, two, three, four. That's B prime. And if you haven't figured it out already, we're going to do the same with C. So I turn my paper to get the 90 degrees. Now, to walk from the origin to get to C, I have to walk left one, two, three, four, five. So negative five, positive one, two, three, four. So turn it back and plot that new point. Negative five, one, two, three, four, five. Up four. One, two, three, four. And that is C prime. And then if you have a straight edge, or if you just want to freehand it, you can. I'm going to connect. And I now have my triangle rotated 90 degrees. So we're going to use the same process here for the next two. So we're going to now rotate 180 degrees still centered at the origin. So I, you always go back to your original triangle unless it tells you otherwise. So I'm going to take this triangle now. I'm not going to turn it just one click because that would be 90, but I'm going to turn it twice so my paper is upside down. Now if I'm standing at the origin, to get to A, I'd have to walk left one, down one. So again, flip your paper back and plot that new point. Left one, down one. And I'm going to call that A double prime because we already have a single prime. So I'm going to go back, turn my paper upside down. I'm looking for where is B. I'd have to walk left, one, two, three, four, and I have to go down one. So turn it around and do that same thing. Left, one, two, three, four, down one. And that's B double prime. One more time to get C. I turn my paper 180 degrees. In order to get to C, I'd have to walk left, one, two, three, four, down one, two, three, four, five. So go back, do the same thing. Left, one, two, three, four, down one, two, three, four, five. 
that's going to give me C double prime. And if I connect, I'll have my triangle. So, so far, we've rotated 90 degrees, which moves at one quadrant. We've rotated 180 degrees, which moves at two quadrants. So now if we're looking to rotate 270 degrees, again, still centered at the origin, I'm going to take my paper and turn it three clicks. One, two, three. So now my triangle is over here. So now again, same process as before. This time to get to A, I'd have to walk right one, down one. So if I go back to my original, right one, down one. And here's A, we're up to triple primes, three little spots. So I'm gonna turn it 270 again. One, two, three. To get to B, I have to walk right one, down one, two, three, four. So I go back. Right one, down one, two, three, four. B, triple prime. And C, again, make sure you go back the same number of degrees for each point. So this was 270, so 90, 180, 270. To get to C, I walk to the right one, two, three, four, five spaces, down one, two, three, four. So last point to the right, one, two, three, four, five, down one, two, three, four. Here is C triple prime, and if we connect, there are our triangles. So if you wanted to put a little note on here, you rotate this way, all right, counterclockwise. Again, this was a 90 degree rotation for this one. The one in the bottom left was 180, the one on the right was 270. So it'll always depend on what quadrant your original image is in, but if it moves one quadrant, that's considered 90, and then so on and so forth. So what we're going to look at here, all right, if we list our steps out to the left so we don't forget them, all right, our steps for rotation. Okay. So first step, turn, paper, counterclockwise and it's going to depend on how many degrees it tells you so if it says 90 you turn it one click 180 two clicks through or 270 three clicks all right so you turn your paper counterclockwise then what you do all right is you replot original points with the points from when the paper was turned. Do you still see that? Yeah. So that was the idea. I know you're going to want to copy that so you can listen while you copy or you can pause. So that was the idea that I turned my paper however many degrees, I figured out, okay, how did I get to point A? I said those coordinates out loud, or you could even jot it down. Then you turn your paper back and you plot those new coordinates so you have your rotated figure. So those are your steps that you want to make sure you go over. All right, again, feel free to pause, go back. Um, add these in, whatever you need to do, but that's going to be our process that we go through. And up at the top here, I'm also going to go back and have us add something down. All right. So there are some rules that you can use if you're someone that prefers the rules saying, okay, what happens to my X coordinate? What happens to my Y? So on and so forth. So if you are rotating 90 degrees, all right. And again, these are all only if you're at the origin. What happens to your points, x, y, is it turns into negative y, x. So the coordinates switch spots, and then the y, original y value becomes negated. If we were to look at the rule for 180, 
And again, if you just want to stick with rotating your paper, that's fine. But these are the rules if you'd prefer to use them. Your original coordinate, x, y. What happens here when it goes from one quadrant to the other quadrant, kind of opposite spots here, the coordinates just negate. They don't switch the order. The signs just change. And if you're talking about 270, so capital R for rotation, 270 to denote the number of degrees I'm turning. My original coordinates, this time they switch, but the original x gets negated. So again, those are your rules if you choose to use them. So pause that if you want to get those down. But the method I strongly encourage here is rotating the paper like we work through. It's one less thing to memorize in terms of rules, and it's going to work on the next example that we also do. So if you didn't get any of that, pause it, go back, rewatch. But I'm going to flip over to the example in the back where our rotations are not centered at the origin. So this says in the diagram below, ABC has the following coordinates. Graph and label A prime, B prime, C prime, the image of A after a rotation of 90, but it says that rotation is going to be centered at point A. So that means that we're not going to rotate around the origin anymore. That's not going to be my point of rotation. I'm going to rotate around point A. So I want the triangle to turn like this. So what you want to do here is we have to make a new set of axes, essentially. So with a straight edge, and maybe a different color pen or something, go through and make a new set of axes. So that way, hopefully you can see that there. Maybe I'll go over it in a little highlighter. Because we're going to use point A like it was our origin. Not sure if that helped at all. You can see it. So we're going to rotate 90. So that means my triangle is going to go over here, one click. So I'm going to rotate A 90 degrees. Well, if I turn my paper 90 degrees, A is still exactly where it was. It's still at the origin of those new axes that I made. So A is not going to change. But if I look at where B is, from point A, in order to get to B, I would have to walk to the left, one, two, three, and I have to go up, one, two. So I'm going to turn my paper back. And from my original point A here, I'm going to do exactly what I just said. I'm going to walk to the left, one, two, three, and I'm going to walk up, one, two. So that's point B prime. So again, I did it from point A because that's my center of rotation. I'm going to rotate 90. How would I walk to get to C from A? I'm going to walk left, one, and I'm going to go up, one, two, three, four, five, six. So I go back, I'm going to go left one, and I'm going to go up one, two, three, four, five, six. So this is a little bit off your paper, I apologize for that. And this would be C prime. So if I go in and I connect these now, you'll notice here that our triangle was rotated 90 but it was rotated around point A. So it's the same process we did before, but you have to go in and make a new axis through the point of rotation. So that's important, so let's jot that down off to the side here. So what we need to do is we have to make new axes or axis through point of rotation. then the rest of the steps are exactly the same as it did before. Find your new point, figure out how would you walk to get there, turn your paper back, and plot those points. All right. So, I'm gonna look at one last example here. I apologize because this video is probably a little bit longer than the previous ones, but it's definitely a longer process. So it says in the diagram below, ABC has the following coordinates. Graph and label A prime, B prime, C prime, the image of ABC after a rotation of 90, centered at point B. So since our center of dilation is point B, I'm going to take my straight edge and make an axis around point B. So B is going to be my new origin. So I have something that looks like that. 
So again, point B isn't going to go anywhere because it's going to stay right in that center of rotation. But if I now want to plot point A, I'm going to turn my paper the 90 degrees that it said. Okay. A little bit smaller here, but if we count, let's see, i got to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I'd walk to the left 9. I have to go down 1, 2, 3. So I'm going to turn my paper back from point B. I'm going to walk to the left 9. 1, 2, 3. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'm going to go down one, two, three. And that's my new point A prime. I'm going to do the same thing with C. So I turn my paper 90. I start at B and I figure out how I'd walk to get to C. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I'm going to go up one, two, three. So I'm going to turn it back. Walk left six. One, two, three. Four, five, six, and I'm going to go up one, two, three. So here's C prime. And if we connect, make sure you go back and connect from B since that point wasn't rotated at all. You will see our new triangle there that was rotated around B. So for your rotations, make sure you always turn the paper the correct number of degrees. Make sure you're always going counterclockwise. So that left corner is coming down towards you. Your triangles or whatever shape it is should essentially move one quadrant or look like it was clicked that 90, 180, or 270 degrees. So take some time, try these practice problems, and then when you are ready, go ahead and take your CFU. See you next time.